All right, guys, we're going to try this. This is not going to be the easiest video in the world to make. It looks like you guys can see the bench. I've got my PR8 squared Dakota Ultrasonics Sonic Checker. Now, we had, uh, by request, guys wanted to see this and do some sonic measurements on it. Well, just like any tool, if you're going to use it, need to calibrate it. Now, there's a couple different ways you can calibrate it. You can get something like this that has different graduations, 1 inch, 750, half inch, 250. But this is carbon steel. Carbon steel has a different velocity when the, the ultrasonic wave goes through. Take a look at the head, right? It's got two different transducers. One is the emitter, one is the uh, one is the receiver, one is the... Oh, you know, one puts out the signal, one takes in the signal. Sorry, I had to deal with engineers all day. My head is cooked. So, where were, we? where were we? If you try to calibrate according to this, why don't we do it and see what it comes up with? And then I'll show you how I do it because I don't have I don't have a calibration block like this for iron. I'm sure they're available, okay? This, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Okay, it's measuring 2.1. Okay, it should be reading 2.5. But this little chunk of iron, which is an old 289 that I was doing for DV that I made a hole in. I actually machined this one section down and I used this little spot to usually get my calibration set. So, how do I do that? I take my digital calipers with a dead battery, measure this section. Now, it's not perfectly machined, but it is... Hold on a second, guys. Sorry. If your screw is loose, it throws it off, especially because this, this gauge is a little bit on the worn outside. So this screw has to be tight enough to hold your head straight. Okay, that's about right. About 103. Point 103. Okay? So when I take... Sonic. Now I want the Sonic to be calibrated towards relatively thin stuff. Okay. So you have to put your coupling gel, which is mostly glycerin. I use uh, the cheapest hair gel I can find with glycerin on it. And you get it in place. I actually like to have this on scan mode. Okay. Scan mode has different uh, electronics inside that it takes multiple readings okay and it makes it easier to scan it okay we're right at 102 uh, I don't think we can get much tighter than that as far as calibration now the other way you can calibrate it is you just look up If you look up cast iron velocity, it'll tell you. Okay, we'll take it off. We'll take it off scan. We'll go to calibrate. Come on. All right. Right now, it's the speed of hard cast iron is 0.22 inches per microsecond. Now, where did I get that number from? I looked it up. And then I did my checking, and it seems to be pretty darn close. So I'm good with that. Now, with this, you have to do this every time you go from iron to aluminum. Because they're different settings, okay? Alright, so I think we've got 
the calibration down. Oh, you know what? There is another way you could do this. You could do calibration on this, which is really kind of cool. I usually don't. I don't use it as much, but I, I, if I'm in where it really works well is if you have you have a piece of iron that's machined really nicely flat. You can put it on cal, and you get a distance. You put it on, you get a solid number. Now it's not on scan, so it's going to be a little bit harder. And then you tell it 102, calibrate. Okay, it changed the speed a little bit. Now we'll take it off calibrate, and we'll measure it. See, it's not right. Put it on scans. Now I'm not going to say this piece of metal is machined exactly perfect. All right, we're 106. Now remember, you have to follow this little gauge. The higher the gauge goes, the better the signal you have. But it does jump around a lot, especially on scan mode. All right, I liked it better where it was. It was almost exactly right where it was. So we're going to take it off scan mode. We're going to go back on calibration. And we're going to set it back to 2200. So we have some coupling major. And someone's going to say, Charlie, which, which number do you think is right? I don't really have an answer, to be honest. What I, I usually do on something like this I mean, I know what it's supposed to be. It should be 102, 103, right? 102, 103. Now, if I fiddle with my gauge, I'm going to get the highest range you can. All I'm doing is I'm changing the arc of the head. Okay? I don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not. But that head has a curve to it this way. It has probably at this point has a slight curve this way to it from just being used a million times. I don't know what they use uh, to cover this. It's just a hard plastic. It seems to wear pretty well. I mean, this is this is not a new piece. Okay, so let's grab this piece. Let's make sure you guys can see something, and we'll try to get this relatively thin area right here. Set. We'll measure this thin spot here. It's about 91 thousandths. So let's see how. Now, as far as I'm concerned, 90 thousandths right there is thinner than we would like. Telling me about 80 thousandths. Now you have to remember, I'm measuring exactly here. I don't know if this bowl gets thinner as it goes down, right? It's a compound, it's a compound curve. It's curved this way and it's curved this way. So I'm not going to be able to get an exact measurement. Now, something that's relatively easy to get would be like this relatively flat part on the roof. Okay, so it was about 0 0.130. It opened a little bit when I pulled it off. So let's see what we're going to get when we measure it. I don't know if 
you guys can even see this. See, I can't do it. I can't do it at the same time. I just can't do it, guys. I don't have enough time. Point three three. Pretty close. Now the really, really thin spot where it's even broken. Now, unfortunately, this is super thin where it broke, but it gets thicker as it goes in. So it's not the easiest spot in the world to measure. But let's see what we can do. It doesn't take as many measurements. It's a little bit slower. See, that's not even close to being right. It should be more like 50,000. There we go. It was like 50, 50 and change. That's more like it. And it was 52. Okay, so might as well do a little bit on the exhaust. Why not? Let's do a little bit of caliber action and see how we do. Now, unfortunately, if you calibrate it for relatively thin sections of iron, as the iron would get thicker, it may get more and more out of calibration. I don't know. I'm not an ultrasonic expert by any means. So let's pick this relatively thin spot here. Okay, that's 0.1790. Exhaust ports are a little tough because they're a tight radius, right? That's about, that's about it. Now, if we could get on the other side and measure, we might get more accurate. Put a little more stuff on because the curve is going to affect it less. I'm not quite jumping around as much. It's measuring a little bit. In any case, we got plenty of metal there to actually run on a, a, an engine without worrying about cracking that, as far as I'm concerned. What else do we need to talk about? Okay, so we talked about different ways to calibrate the ultrasonic. Is it a foolproof method? No. Is it pretty accurate when you get it set up right? Yeah, but you kind of really have to stay on top of it. Okay? The way I like to do it is I, I like to set it I like to set it for this, which is about a hundred thousandths, which is about as thin as I like to go anywhere, to be honest. I know lots of guys go down to sixty thousandths, so that's kind of pushing it too much. You know. And if you look at it, there's not a lot of metal there. Okay? And if we go against our block, our block is two fifty. Okay? So you can see uh, that's, that's about as thin as you want to go. All right, guys. I hope this was semi-educational. Let me think of this. Before I sign off, let me see if there's anything else that you guys would like to see. 
We did that. We did that. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do this thick piece of floor right here. Okay? It's, it's only banged a few times where I hit it with a hammer. Let's see what we can do with that. And then we're going to put it in Okay, 0.261. The other thing I should probably tell you is the finish makes a difference. And if there's corrosion on it and bumps, like corrosion and uh, hills and valleys from corrosion, it affects your measurement as well. Okay, 261. Pretty good. Perfect in every way like Wiffy? Not quite. Will it get you, uh, keep you out of danger? If it's used often, it will. Now, like I said, the, the smoother the texture is on the port, the better it works. Which is a problem because, you know, I don't, I don't use really fine textures everywhere. So sometimes I have to actually polish a spot and then take a measurement and then retexture. It's kind of a pain, but if you uh, want to keep from making stuff sprinklers, that's what you got to do. Hopefully this thing recorded. 17 minutes worth, guys. All right, just checking to make sure it actually was uh, still running. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If uh, there's something else on the ultrasonic you want me to show you, be glad to. Dakota does not send me money. They really should. If you buy something from them, tell them I sent you. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.